Hey mm -hmm. gang! So, Night Angel, book two. I liked it a lot less than book one. In my review for book one, I mentioned the sexism prevailing the book, and it didn't ruin my enjoyment of book one. It did sour it a little bit, but I could handle that level of sexism while acknowledging that it wasn't good. And honestly, I'm not exactly sure if book two actually had way more sexism, or if I was just more aware of it because I had already thought it through for book one. But either way, the level of sexism in book two was pretty unbearable and I'm not planning on reading book three because of this. And to take this apart, I just want to discuss one character. Now, the types of things that I'm talking about are prevalent in many, many, many female characters in this book. In fact, most of the female characters in this book have their plot revolving around a guy. But for Vi, I think it is the worst, and we will take that apart a little bit. Vi is one of our point of view characters this book. She is an awesome wet boy assassin about to end her apprenticeship, and she's apprenticed to a very bad guy. So her goals at the beginning of the book is to prove her worth as an assassin so that she can end her apprenticeship, become a master assassin, and then she doesn't have to keep being under the thumb of her terrible master. But then this plot takes some turns. <sighs> one of the turns it takes is that Vi acknowledges her huge crush on Kylar, another one of our main characters. And then her goals, instead of being, I want to be a good assassin so that I can get out of the thumb of my master and be my own independent woman, her goals instead become, I want to be a good assassin so I can impress Kylar. Or maybe you wouldn't be impressed with that. Maybe I shouldn't. Anyway, all of her decisions slowly devolve into impressing and wooing Kylar. And her self-worth also gets tied up in if she can succeed in this. It feels like Vi is going to be the engaging, awesome, independent, strong female character that breaks this sexism pattern, but then she becomes one of the worst ones, kind of just simping after Kylar. She does, at the end of the book, get the awesome win, but she only does this through totally exploiting her and Kylar's relationship. You see how that's frustrating? That she doesn't save the day because of her awesome wet boy assassin powers and capabilities which she has been training for years for. She kind of wins the day because of the power that her forcing Kylar into a marriage gives her. So let's talk a little bit more about the exploration of marriage in this book because that's also interesting, and I'd like to use Vi as our lens as well, because at the end of the book, while Kylar is mostly dead, she forces him into a magical marriage in order to gain the power she needs to defeat the God King character. Okay then, and the reason that she needs this bonus power to defeat the God King character is because the God King, surprise, is her magic father. If I have to hear that one more person is surprised, the God King's magic child. I it's, it's too much. There are too many characters in this book that fit that description. Why does he have so many secret children? Anyway, so just like the fact that her shackling herself metaphorically and almost literally to Kylar is what gives her the power to break out from under this terrible patriarchal power, but it's only through bonding herself to a different patriarchal power. Not as she was hoping at the beginning of the book through her own capabilities and hard work. And then we have the other side of Vi's marriage situation, which is there's a group of women mages who are having various political factions and problems, and what they need is a chosen one who is also married. The chosen one has to be married. It cannot be an unmarried woman. It's got to be a woman who can be our figurehead, and she has to be married in order to solve this political problem. Which, like, makes sense internally inside the plot, that they need a married woman in order to bridge this political gap. But also, why does it have to be this way in this story? Couldn't the situation just have been written differently so you didn't need a married woman to be your figurehead? So then when these women mages find five, they're like, you would make a great chosen one, but too bad you're not married. And then, you know, they help manipulate her into forcing Kyler into a marriage, which is also icky because she is obviously wrong in this moment when she is forcing Kylar into this magical marriage when he is mostly dead. There is no consent at all. Vi is obviously the villain in that moment. So not only is Vi getting married a symbol of her submitting to patriarchal power in order to escape patriarchal power that's more evil, it is also a symbol of her own villainy. Why do almost all of the themes and messages in this book circle back to women need men to rule them? Women are just good for romance. 
Yes, she's still a capable assassin, but right now it feels like her main personality trait is just simping after Kylar. Anywho, so I won't be continuing on with the series. But after I read book one and loved it, I also designed like a few t-shirts because it was fun. So if you're interested in Night Angel merch, go check out my store. I also have lots of other t-shirt designs, so like, there are other options. Anyway, comment with some sort of woman-inspired emoji if you made it to the end of the video, and thank you, and how do you guys feel about this? Is it as bad as I'm thinking, or am I overreacting? I feel like I'm not overreacting. <laughs>